Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. That's right. It's Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier. I am here with you, and we are going to be talking about interesting things that are happening. I've been talking about this for a while now. If you recall, I was talking over the summer about the race, the mayoral race for 2017 in the city of Binghamton. And I was talking in that race about one of the most important factors that any candidate and any election, any choice that the public has about elected officials, I was talking about the character and the credibility of the people that were involved. Now, in 2017 and the mayoral race in Binghamton, I was talking about Tariq Abdelazine and Mayor Rich David, mostly about Tariq Abdelazine and the fact that what he presented to the public was not what he was about. And that his programs, his support of the racism out of Black Lives Matters, his support of the radical far left, far outweighed and was far hidden from the public. And this is a problem. And this is a major problem. As it wound up, many in the public agreed. Not just because Citizen Action is a splinter far left organization and is not supported in the city of Binghamton, in the county of Broome, or in the New York 22nd district, but because beyond that, people were able to recognize that Mr. Abdelazine was once again changing his story to try and suit and to sell himself to voters. Uh, that is my opinion of it. And I believe that it was shown and proven by the fact that he lost again. He also had run previously for Broome County uh, executive, and he lost that race as well by about the same margin, well, roughly two to one, because the public rejected the goals and ideas of citizen action, which Mr. Abdelzine promoted. And he tried to hide that, except he had his moments, like in the second mayoral debate, which if you heard my coverage with the SUNY Broom Republicans, we discussed it there. It was very apparent for everyone to be able to see, as he called the city of Binghamton, racist, a view that he agrees with, along with Black Lives Matter, that people are racist, views of the fact that people who are cleaning their neighborhoods are inherently racist if they happen to be white, and that if they happen to be black, they have a right to destroy and destroy their neighborhoods, destroy their rental properties because they're black and the owner is presumably not. These are the ideals that Citizen Action promoted. And it's this character, this, this willingness to accept the worst of people and yet go out in the public when there's a camera on and to not divulge that this is your belief, to go out and to actively hide this from the public, to basically play two different sides of the game, to talk out of both sides of your mouth, as the saying goes. Well, that's what we see. But we see this in politics beyond just this one race. I believe that was endemic and a, a perfect example of what we're seeing nationally. Now, let's go back to 2016, the presidential race. The Democratic Party got caught. The DNC Democratic primaries were rigged. It was something that came out during the race and was pushed down and not really addressed by the public, excuse me, by the news media, because Hillary Clinton was running. And it was decided, as we now know from emails, that in 2015, the Democratic National Committee made a decision, signed agreements, and said Hillary Clinton was going to win. And they were going to give her all the power as long as she gave them $1.2 million a month. Well, that's kind of deceptive, considering that the rank and file members of the Democratic Committee, the Democratic Party, had no idea that this had happened. This was not disclosed to the public. This was not disclosed to Democratic members. The members went out and they supported, many of them, Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders, because they believe he had a great message. And we will never know whether or not that was a message that America would have accepted, because the Democratic Committee... The Democratic National Committee, DNC, under Debbie Wasserman Schultz, decided, well, the American public doesn't get that choice. They don't have that right. The elites made a decision for people. Again, this is a denial of opportunity. This is a disempowerment of voters. This is politicians, elite politicians, deciding and turning the tables on the system where it's supposed to be the public 
tells those who are elected and who want to be elected how to serve them and say, this, you're there to serve. And instead, what we see in the example of the DNC with Hillary Clinton, this is the elites, the political elites, telling the public, this is what you're going to deal with. This is what you're going to do because we tell you to. And you're going to serve us, the political elites. That's what the DNC is saying there, that the public must serve the Democratic Party, not the Democratic Party serves the public. And again, just like with Tariq Abdelazine, we're watching two different faces. When the cameras are on and they're out making their speeches, you're hearing the Democratic Party at the local, national, all the levels. They're coming out and they're saying, well, this is a set of rules that everyone should be abide, abide by. And we're great. And we're all for the people. And then behind closed doors, they have entirely different actions. They do things that whether people like it or not. You can go back to Obamacare as an example. In June of 2010, the public has consistently said in every poll by every organization that Obamacare or the ACA, whatever you want to call it, it's always been felt as negative. It was not something people wanted because it infringes on the right to choose. They could have fixed that. Instead, they made it happen anyway and shoved it down the throat of the public which is my number one problem with Obamacare. Not that it doesn't have a lot of other problems, but it denies the public the right of choice because political elites said, this is what you're going to do. You serve us. This is what we want, so you must do it. And that is the wrong answer for any nation, but especially for America, where freedom is the number one thing, the right to fail, the right to choose, the number one course in America. That's what we're about. So we're looking at this and notice there's a chain here. You're talking about 2000. I'm, I'm talking about 2010 and bills and laws that were enacted to take away the choice from Americans. We're talking about an election in 2016 that took away the rights of Americans to choose to have a, a choice and, and to make a decision to pick the best candidate they thought was available to them and to push the thought that the public serves the elites, not the other way around. Politicians serve the public, not the other way. That's what it's supposed to be. But that's not the message that's coming out. And the message is so well packaged and it is so well infiltrated into the media, which is predominantly left leaning. And there have been plenty of studies to prove that the media is predominantly left leaning and they promote this because they agree that the elites should lead the rest of the public and the public should serve those elites. And so they push out that message, which is why we didn't hear about the DNC rigging the primaries, even though it was proven fact, there were emails we had even back then that said this was a fact. And matter of fact, once it was irrefutably proven Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was the president of the Democratic National Committee, resigned. And on the same day, about an hour and a half later, she was hired by the Hillary Clinton campaign. I can't tell you how much more favoritism you need to show to show that there was something being done wrong. She gets fired from her job in the DNC because she did the wrong thing and favored one candidate over another and was hired by the campaign she was helping. Do you think one hand washed the other? But again, this is the elites taking care of each other and the public, well, they'll just deal with it. That's the message that's coming out there. Now, when I say these things and I'm looking at this, so we're talking about a law that was enacted. We're talking about a presidential race that was rigged. We're talking about a local race with mayor where people were denied and deceived, in my opinion. Then what does that sum up to? Well, look at what's the latest thing. And the latest thing is Roy Moore, who's running for the Senate in Alabama, and Senator Al Franken. And this is huge. This is huge. You've probably, been, you've probably seen this on Facebook. You've seen it on the TV. But what have you really seen? Because it's very interesting to see what is actually happening there. For the last week, you've heard a lot about Roy Moore that he's a horrible individual, that he has been accused of doing horrible things, sexual assaults, 
he has an accusation, which go back years. And these are all, and every one of the individuals, uh, according to reports that I've seen on this, every single individual, every woman who's accused him from the past of having uh, allegedly done sexual assault is a member of the D Democratic Party, is working for the DNC and or Hillary Clinton. Every single individual so far, according to the reports I've seen. Now, does that mean it didn't happen? No, of course not. It may well have happened. Then again, I also remember the demonizing that happened to Herman Cain when he ran for president. It was so bad and he was so horribly demonized. He had, he was leading the Republican race to run for president and he had to retract and leave that race, the presidential race. And when he did so, a year and a half later, he was vindicated and in the courts, it was proven never happened. The courts, it took, he went to court took a year and covered the fact that he was right. He was innocent. It never happened. But they took, they made sure it was headline news that he was accused. And the accusation was enough for him to lose the ability to run for president. We saw the media lose their minds on a decades old conversation, private conversation of President Trump before he became president in a locker room. And I'm not saying it's a good thing to say or a bad thing to say. I will say that I have heard conversations far, far worse from women about other women and men in bars and locker rooms all around the country and around the world. It's not the worst thing I've ever heard. Beyond that, the country was set afire, or at least the media was set afire by the fact that he said these things decades ago. Years and years ago, he made a comment and they blew it up and said, oh my God, how horrible he is. And he's president. And they wanted to roast him. Then we got to Roy Moore and Judge Moore is running and he's expected to win in Alabama. And suddenly these accusations from far, far ago come up. Mind you, he was a judge. If these accusations existed, and I always have this question, just as I did with Herman Cain. These accusers are coming out from where? Where have you been? Roy Moore, judge, political, he's been known. This is a known figure. You had opportunities for a decade to come out and make announcement. He was running for the office for a while now. It's not like he just jumped into the race yesterday. He's been running for a while. Now he's going to win and suddenly... Now there's the accusation at, on the eve of him winning that they're saying, oh my goodness, he's so horrible. Look what he did. Where was that accusation when he said, you know what? I choose to run. Where was that day one announcement that said, oh, you're running. The public needs to know this. I want to come out and tell people that you sexually assaulted me. Why did they wait? Why did they wait? And if you have to ask that question, why did they wait? Then you have to also consider what political affiliation do they have? Because they're not just a per rank and file member. They're working for the Democratic National Committee. They're working for Hillary Clinton. I'm sorry. I, it becomes a factor when they didn't say anything day one. They waited until he's about to win. And now they're trying to change the election in the same exact way that Dan Livingston, another candidate at the local level here in Binghamton, running for Broome County County Clerk, Dan Livingston, the day before an election, put out a document that was factually incorrect, that he put out lies, that he tried to hide his name for him and got caught and admitted to the public the day before an election that he put it out there because he wanted to win. This is the motivation of the Democratic Party, especially the fringe movement, which has taken over most of it, the far left. They will do whatever it takes to win. They want to impose their will onto the public. They are the elites and the public should serve them. And I'm showing you case by case by case, local, national, over years, this has been happening. This is not a new thing. These aren't people who just suddenly decided to do this. It has been ongoing but it's not portrayed that way in the media. And if you think I'm wrong, what we heard is, and I have a clip, I'm going to play it in the next segment, that Roy Moore is being demonized and said, oh, he can't be elected. And he, if he gets elected, he should be kicked out. 
he should be expunged. Well, that's a very interesting statement. Since that's not what the people have decided, that's not what the public is leaning towards. That's not their decision on allegations that have not been proven. And we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Not saying that he is or isn't innocent or guilty. I don't know the man. But he's being excoriated in the media. And don't you know? It's interesting. Because isn't there another prominent Democrat that just came out and found out that, just like everyone else, a decade ago, made a horrible... He actually has captured proof of him doing a sexual assault. And you would think that this sitting senator should be excoriated. He should be roasted. He should be denounced. Except that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening by far. But I've already gone over time, so let's take a break. And I'm going to come back, and we're really going to go into Roy Moore and Senator Al Franken. We're going to go into that. Thank you, everyone, for coming back to No Sound Bites Allowed to join me, your host, Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier. And I was just leading in, in the last segment, basically setting the groundwork about what we're going to talk about, which is Roy Moore and, more importantly, uh, Senator Al Franken. And to describe and to detail the deception that is happening to the public, the disservice that is happening to the public, because we're watching the Democratic Party, play two sides of a coin. And neither side is to the advantage of the public. That's right. They're out there making statements. And while they make these statements, they're deceiving the public because they don't apply to anyone that actually is elected. The Democratic Party is protecting itself. And the public just has to deal with the aftermath. And I don't say these things lightly. I say this very, very seriously, and I say this, and of course it is my opinion, but it's based on evidence. I look at Dan Livingston at the local level here in Broome County, as I was just mentioning, and the fact that he actively chose to make a legal document and to spread it around to voters. He sent this out to voters the day before an election purposefully to deceive them, to mislead them. For the mere purpose of being able to get elected, he was not denounced by anyone. Other members of Citizen Action didn't denounce him. 
Tariq Abdelazine, who was running for mayor, didn't denounce him. The assembly seat, every Democrat in this, the county executive, none of them denounced him at the local level. But shouldn't they have? That was an illegal action. He should, he should have been ostracized by the Democratic Party from its chairman, Timothy Grippen, on down and said, that's not what the Democratic Party stands for. That's not what we're about. Citizen Action should have said, well, that's not what we're about. We're not here to break laws just for the mere purpose of winning and deceiving the public. But instead, they said none of that. And by implication and in politics, if you don't answer the question, it is assumed the answer is correct. It's like court of law. If you fail to answer because it may incriminate you, well, that's the same thing as the truth. It's the same thing as an admission of truth, I should say. And I'm not a lawyer, so don't quote me on that. But it's understood as that. And I have to say, I, I can only draw one understanding. When Citizen Action has no hesitation in the fact that its members are lying to the public for the mere purpose of winning an election at all costs, at any cost necessary, to deceive the public just to gain power, They're, and they say nothing, they have no comment whatsoever. When the chairman of the Democratic, uh, the county Democratic Party, Timothy Gerpen, when he says nothing, he allows this to go by and, oh, it happened. And doesn't tell everyone that they should not vote for this candidate because he's just deceived the public. And what would he do in elected office? How badly would he deceive the public then? How badly would he misuse his power then? No, instead, he let it go. And voters had nothing but, if they got lucky, they noticed that this was a lie that was put out to them. And how many votes were individuals who voted for him based on this lie, this illegal document, and didn't know that it was a lie? Didn't know that this was breaking the law, an active, purposeful act of breaking the law. And why hasn't Dan Livingston been prosecuted for that? I don't know. Except that the media didn't really go and bother to publish it. In the same way that the media didn't bother when I had, when Tariq Abdelazine assaulted me. He verbally assaulted me uh, in front of news cameras. Three members of the news media watched it. There was a live camera taping it. And when asked to publish this document, to allow the public to be able to see it, the news media ignored all things. And no, didn't have, they didn't want to even address it. They never denied it. They just didn't address it. Tariq Abdelzine didn't want to address it. The party didn't want to address it. But again, it's a deception. This was an assault that was made by Tariq Abdelzine. Oh, but it was, he's a Democrat attacking a Republican. We don't want to talk about that. I guarantee you if it was the other way around, it would have been in every newspaper and every, the video would have been everywhere. Everywhere. But that's the double-edged sword, the two faces here. Oh, this is our public face. Aren't we great people? Except we do horrible things. Dan Livingston, Tariq Abdelazi, Hillary Clinton, and now Al Franken. Then there are more examples. You can go further and further if you want. And I'm not saying that Republicans are angels. I'm not saying that at all. But Republicans, when they do something wrong, are ostracized by the Democrats and Republicans alike. And the media jumps on that bandwagon all the way. So they have nowhere to go. They have no backup. It's not like, oh, we're going to save that person. No, Republicans throw them under the bus because they deserve to be. And Democrats pile on and the media piles on. So let's be serious. But I made many examples of this where we've seen right or wrong, Republicans are ostracized. Asked Herman Cain about the presidential race, lost it for something that was absolutely false, proven in court. He was vindicated, still lost the presidency, probably can't ever run again. Now, again, Roy Moore, I don't know him. I don't know if he's innocent or not. There is the presumption of innocence that everyone's supposed to get in this nation, but he's a Republican and he's running in a race and he's expected to win. So that presumption went out the window the day the first allegation was made. And we saw that, I did promise that I was going to play a tape. And one of the things you're going to hear, this is Kirsten Gillibrand, 
Senator Kirsten Gillibrand from New York, who states on CBS News on November 16th that she directly would not want Roy Moore to be elected, and if he were elected, she would try and find a way to get him removed. So I'm going to play that in just a moment so you can hear exactly what her words are. Because in that same interview, and I'm probably going to, I'm going to play it in order, one of the first things that CBS, the news anchors, were saying in their discussion was that, that there are two members of Congress, a Republican and a Democrat, that were accused of sexual assaults. They don't name either. Except it's news everywhere in the nation that they're talking about Roy Moore and Senator Al Franken. Those are the two members. But they didn't want to bring it up by name. Not why they had Kirsten Gillibrand of the Democratic Party and a senator right there in front of them. So they let it go. That's strange because they have no problem saying Roy Moore, Roy Moore, Roy Moore sexual assault for a week now. Constantly. But they get a Democrat on at the same time that there's a Democrat who's done sexual assault and they don't want to talk about that. And they never bring up the fact that there is a sitting senator who has been accused of sexual assault and does Senator Kirsten Gillibrand want to see that individual removed as well? Never comes up. Again, that was on CBS News, November 16th with Kirsten Gillibrand. Here's what she had to say, and I'm going to play that for you. Congresswoman uh, Spear testified the other day that there are two current members of Congress, one Democrat and Republican, who have engaged in this kind of behavior, but she did not name them. Do you think they should be named? Well, that's up to the survivors. Uh, a survivor might not want to have to be in the middle of a story for the next X number of months. Uh, she might want to continue with her career. She may, might not want to be discriminated against or somehow retaliated against. So the way I've written my bill is to make sure the survivor has the choice about whether or not she wants to take the issue public or he. Uh, because right now they don't even have that option. They have to, fi they have to actually sign a an agreement to not disclose what happened to them. Mitch McConnell and others have floated the idea of having Jeff Sessions serve as a write-in candidate for his old seat in the Senate. Let me ask you whether or not you would agree with that. Would you support that? And if it were between Jeff Sessions and Roy Moore, who would you rather serve with in the Senate? Well, there's a great candidate uh, who's running on the Democratic line who I support. But from a Republican standpoint, because obviously we know that the Republican is the front runner there. If I had to choose a Republican write-in, I would pick Luther Strange. So you are not in favor of Jeff Sessions serving as a write-in? I just gave you my answer. Okay. If Senator Moore is elected, do you think he should be seated? Uh, no, I would vote against him being seated, actually. All right. Now, I found that to be very interesting. Again, she would get rid of Roy Moore, who has been accused without proof by individuals whose motives are questionable. Members of the Democratic Party, members of Hillary Clinton's campaign, individuals who work for the Democratic Party, and decades later. So there's no proof. There's their word, and I'm not saying that they're lying, but that's their word. And then there's, on the other end, there's the fact, the photographic evidence, and the admission by Senator Al Franken of sexual assault. And there have been other claims that have come out since about Senator Franken and sexual assault. But yet, no one's asking, and Democrats are walking back very carefully, anything to say about Al Franken needs to be removed. Why not? It's a serious question. If we have, if the rules are that you have been accused, and therefore you should be removed from office, how does Al Franken get to walk away from that? That's what they did to Herman Cain. He was accused. He got, he had to leave the presidential race, even though he was leading at the time, and he was destroyed. They're saying Roy Moore should not be allowed to run, and if he runs, he should lose, and if he gets in and he wins, he should be removed from office because he's accused of a sexual assault. Not proven, not guilty, accused. Okay? Okay, if the accusation is all it takes to make someone lose an office, to remove them from the seat, regardless of whether voters want that individual or not, literally the power of the people to vote for whomever they want. There is nothing in any part of the Constitution that says 
if the public votes this person in, they cannot have that person serve unless they've literally violated laws or committed treason. There's really nothing that stops them. You can vote anyone in. If that's the case, they're disavowing the power of the voters before the voters even get a chance to make their vote. And they are planning every option possible to disenfranchise the voters and to remove this individual that they don't like based on an accusation. How can a sitting senator who is proven, it's not an accusation, it is proven fact that he has committed sexual assault. The very same Democrats, Kirsten Gillibrand, who's a who wants to be considered a champion of women's rights and fighting against sexual assault, how can she sit there and not actively demand that Senator Al Franken be removed from office? And she's not the only one. She is far from the only one. But before I go any further, and I'm going to give you proof of this, and I want you to think, if this is what they do when they are confronted with someone saying, here are your rules, the set of rules you established, we're using them in the same exact circumstance, if not stronger, and rather than deal with the consequences and actually say, well, these are the rules, we live by them, we die by them, these are the rules. They're saying, no, the rules don't apply to us. We are elites. We're the Democratic Party. It doesn't apply. It applies to everyone else. That should terrify every single person out there, whether you're a Democrat, a Libertarian, a Conservative, a Republican. The fact that we have a party that believes they are above the law and that they can dictate to the public how the law should be applied should terrify everyone in America. It's a direction that is terrifying. But we're going to take a break and I'm going to come back with some proof of what I'm talking about. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. That's right. It's Dragon of the Southern Tier, Michael Voss at No Sound Bites Allowed, and I'm happy to have you back with me one more time. For this final segment, as I promised, I wanted to give some proof of what I'm talking about, and we can do that to show you how right now the Democratic Party is actively, actively looking as them, at themselves as elites and the public as servants to them, that there are two separate sets of rules. Actually, there's a set of rules for the Democratic elites and the rank and file of everyone else. But there's also a set of rules for Republicans and Democrats. And they're not the same. They're very separate rules. Because you got to hate a Republican for the very same things that you should love a Democrat for. Now, let me explain. Anyone who ever makes a donation, 
doesn't matter to which party, it doesn't matter to which campaign or any kind of political donation. The purpose of that donation is to advance a cause. If you're making a donation to the Libertarians, you want to see the Libertarian values advanced. If you're making a donation to the Democratic Party, Republican Party, any party, you want to see the ideals and goals of that group to grow and advance. That's why you make the donation. So that could be electing a candidate or trying to pass a bill. Doesn't matter. It's the same thing. You're trying to advance an agenda. That's why you're giving them the money to be able to promote that agenda and hopefully get it passed to get that enacted. It's fine. That's standard. That's what the system is. And it's always been that way. And everyone has access to it. That's fine. I, I have no complaint about that. What I do have is when we see hypocrisy about that, when a candidate, as an example, Hillary Clinton with Norman Sue, Norman Sue was a convicted criminal for embezzlement, who was a bundler for the Hillary Clinton campaign in 2012, and he had amassed about two hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 for the Hillary Clinton campaign. I think it was at least 250000 may have been 400000 And he had given it to her, even though he was an active fugitive of the law and was arrested because he got a picture taken with Hillary Clinton, and that led the authorities to say, hey, wait a minute. This is a fugitive. We've been looking for this guy so we could arrest him. He got arrested, and Hillary Clinton was faced with the question of what to do with the money. She kept it. She kept it so that she could run for president. That's ill-gotten gains. It's money from a criminal, an active fugitive of the law. You would think she would get rid of that money to donate it, to give it back to the people who were misled by this criminal. No, she kept it. That was her goal. She wanted to keep the money. Let's think about something more recent, not 2012. What about currently? Well, we see that Senator Al Franken, being the good Democrat that he is, has taken the money that the public gave to him to advance the Democratic cause, and he's used that money to help different campaigns, in particular, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and also smaller candidate for the New York 22nd race, Anthony Brindisi, an assemblyman from up in Utica. And in particular, Mr. Mr. Brindisi received $1,500 from Senator Al Franken to help support his campaign. His local race in New York was being supported by Al Franken in the Midwest. Isn't that kind of funny? Let's think about that for a second. So Al Franken gave money to assemblyman Anthony Brindisi for his race for Congress he was advancing the cause of Democrats. He was supporting a Democratic candidate. Okay, that's all fair and fine. You can do that. Here's the thing. Al Franken, he's been proven to be a sexual predator. A sexual, he made a sexual assault that he does not deny. And being the good Democrat, Senator Gillibrand won't speak about it. And she's upset about it, I'm sure. Anthony Brindisi, well, he had a very different take. His answer, and I want to quote this because this appears in Twitter by Anthony Brindisi. These are his words. He made the statement today at five o'clock. To be exact, he made the statement at 525 p.m. And he said that regarding the donation he received from Al Franken's PAC, Political Action Committee, quote, sexual harassment is never a joke, plain and simple. I am sending my donations from Al Franken to Planned Parenthood of Mohawk Hudson and Family Planning Services in South Central New York. End quote. What does that mean? That he's, instead of giving back the money, instead of rejecting the money, he's using the money to do exactly what he would have done anyway. Planned Parenthood is a democratic cause. It's one of their major supporters, and they support it mutually. Kind of like Tariq Abdelazim with Citizen Action and Black Lives Matters. He supports them, they support him. Same thing. So Al Franken supports Anthony Brindisi. Anthony Brindisi is returning the support to the Democratic Party, to Planned Parenthood. Essentially, Anthony Brindisi supports Planned Parenthood. He was going to put money to them anyway. As a matter of fact, I think he already has. So you used the money. You didn't return the money. You didn't change the way the money is being used. But you made it sound like, oh, I won't, I won't accept that money. I won't use that money to advance my agenda. 
Let's think about that. Anthony Brindisi is running for the New York 22nd District. He just took money and he gave it to Democratic supporters. What are those Democratic supporters going to do with their money? Are they going to use it to help some Republican cause? Or are they going to give the money back to the Democrat that just gave it to them? Do you have any doubt that Planned Parenthood is going to give money again back to Anthony Brindisi? They've already been donating to him before. Do you have any doubt that they're going to give him money back? Which means the money he gave them plus more. So essentially, he never got rid of the money. It's a circle. He took the money from the left hand and gave it to the right hand, and it's his money again. He still accepted the money from Al Franken, a sexual predator. And notice in his statement, he does not say that Al Franken should be removed from office. Why not? Roy Moore should be removed, right? That is the rules the Democrats made. You've been accused. You should be removed. Well, Al Franken has been proven. Shouldn't he absolutely be removed? I mean, I've said this a couple times, but it's the rules. If an accusation is enough to remove an individual from the ability to hold office, then someone who is holding office absolutely should be removed when proven to be the predator. That's it. It's that simple. But Anthony Brindisi seems incapable of saying that, you know what, I, I so strongly believe in women and fighting against sexual assault that I reject this money and give it back to Senator Al Franken. He can do whatever he wants with it. He's not standing up there saying, I want to donate this to some other cause that doesn't directly benefit me. He said, no, no, I'm going to take the money. I'm going to put it in my left pocket from Al Franken. I'm going to put it in my right pocket, which is Planned Parenthood. And Planned Parenthood is going to give me the money right back and more. And I'm going to win some votes because people are going to go, isn't that great? He's standing up for women. He's fighting against sexual assault. He's taking that money and he's giving it away to get it right back. That's the part that wasn't said. I'm giving the money away so that I can get it right back. Because that is that loop. He's giving the money to Planned Parenthood and Planned Parenthood is going to give the money back. Don't believe me. Don't believe me. Track the money. There are many, many great organizations out there, including OpenSecrets.org, and you can see the donations candidates get. Watch the money. He will make a donation to Planned Parenthood, and I am willing to bet every dollar and dime I have that Planned Parenthood, if they have not already done so, is going to be giving them money back. It's a circle. So he doesn't, he didn't lose the money. He didn't give it away. Basically, he cleaned the money. It's like a gangster. He cleaned the money. He took the dirty money and he cleaned it by moving it around a little bit and he got it back. And he got the goodwill of, I'm fighting sexual assault. Except he isn't. He didn't say that Al Franken, as an example of sexual assault in Congress, should be removed because the example of a member, sitting member of Congress should be a higher standard than anyone else in the nation. And the impropriety, the proven impropriety of this individual at the highest levels of our government is unacceptable, and therefore he should be removed from office. Then if you say that, I take a lot more credit in when you say that Roy Moore should be removed. Because it's the same standard. It's the same standard people are being held to. That's not what they're saying. The standard they're saying is, Roy Moore, a political opponent, should be destroyed. So we don't have that problem, that political opponent. We want that opponent gone. And when it comes to our own party, well, we're going to ignore it as much as possible. And we're going to make it look good, but we're not going to do anything. Because the standard isn't about them. It's not actually about having to have the moral high ground and to say that as members of Congress, they should be leading as examples to the public. No, no, that's not what they're saying. That's not what Anthony Brindisi is saying. That's not what the Democratic Party is saying. No, what they're saying is... It's okay. He's a Democrat. He gets a pass because he's in our party. And we will accept sexual predators. Because he's got power, kind of like Harvey Weinstein, you know, someone who has a lot of money, a lot of power. And they turned a blind eye, standing next to him, accepting his checks all day, all night, and giving the money when he got caught, and he had no excuse, they gave the money to 
Planned Parenthood, and other Democratic organizations that already support them because that money's coming right back to them. It's cleaning the money. It's money laundering. That's what, in my opinion, I have to say it is. It's money laundering. They're using the public. It sounds like it's a great thing. It sounds so important. They're standing up for us. No, they're not. No, they're not. Because if they, if Anthony Brindisi was actually standing up, if Senator Kirsten Gillibrand were actually standing up, then they would say, Al Franken has to go. Because we want Roy Moore to go, Al Franken has to go. Has to. It's not even a question. It's not even an if or a, a maybe. It is a must, period, stop. He must go for them to have any credibility whatsoever. But they don't care about credibility. Their credibility is the fact that they are elected and the rank and file will do what they say because the rank and file serve the elites, the electeds. That's their viewpoint. And that's why they can take money and launder it. It's a boomerang. Money's like a boomerang. You give it away and it comes right back to you. Doesn't that happen for everyone? No. This isn't even funny because it's so wrong. At every level, we are watching this happen, and we are watching the media allow it to happen. And people are allowing it because they're not noticing that this is not just a double standard. It is an abuse of the system, and it is a disservice to the public, and it is the worst thing you could possibly do. Like a wolf in sheep's clothing, they look the part, so people assume they are the part. But if you listen to what they're saying, and if you watch what they're doing, that is not the case. You don't like Roy Moore. Who cares? If you think he's guilty, then you must accept that Al Franken is guilty. If you think Roy Moore should be removed, then you have to agree that Al Franken must be removed because that is the set of rules that you're setting. That is the standard you're setting. If that is the bar, both men fail. But if that is not the bar, then tell me what it is. Because what, what's being said right now is not that. It is a preservation of power and using people's emotions to get it done. We've seen it happen with Obamacare. We've seen it with the SAFE Act and gun registration leg legislation, restriction legislation. And we're watching it happen right now with sexual assault. Because if you really wanted to do something, you wouldn't put it where it's coming right back to you. Don't give it to Planned Parenthood. Give it to an organization that will never, ever give a dime to any political candidate or organization. Or give it back to Al Franken. Or donate it to the IRS to pay down the national debt. Do any of those things. But don't give it to an, a dedicated, democratic, stronghold organization that's going to give you the money right back. Because that is a deception and a lot. But this is my opinion. And I am the dragon of the southern tier. And I am spouting fire. I hope this controversial subject has made you think. You don't have to agree with me. I never ask for that. But I want you to come to your own conclusion. Think about it. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong. Let's have that discussion. Without 30-second sound bites and without deception, let's really talk about this. I thank you, and I hope to see you again at No Sound Bites Allowed.